I would like to introduce you to the concept of fantasy writing of actual events. Not based on actual events, not inspired by, but rather actual events. That is, a pure documentation or novelized version of events that happened on a persistent world role-playing server. It's a new and unexplored genre that doesn't really have a name yet. The special thing about that, though, is that this genre kinda writes itself in an entirely improvised manner. Each player is playing one character in the story, the dungeon masters drive the story, and the builders and world creators set the scene. If done right, there is no limit to what we can do with that. We find ourselves with the ability to novelize epic tales in a uniquely improvised massive collaborative writing effort that we can entirely claim actually happened. There is a lot to unpack here, so let's start from the beginning. Perhaps you're familiar with the idea of online role-playing, I have a bunch of videos explaining what it means. In a nutshell, it's players creating characters in certain game servers and play-acting them. We'll be focusing on Neverwinter Nights because it's one of the most powerful collaborative storytelling tools we have today. I would even consider it the most powerful tool for the fantasy genre at the moment. By the way, and I keep being astonished by that fact, but that moment has lasted for 18 years and counting. Neverwinter Nights is very much different from mainstream MMORPGs. MMOs don't give players true power to affect change. A good story should allow a great level of flexibility. MMOs are static. If they do change, it's not because of players affecting the story, they change because an executive said it would be more lucrative. Look no further than the pay to win or pay to customize modules. Any sort of semblance of players changing the landscape like a housing system is not driven by roleplay or the story, but by the player's bank account and how much they're willing to pay. Shroud of the Avatar is perhaps the most extreme example of it, an MMO where you can buy entire towns with real money and shape them to your liking. Do you think the creators care about what the players are doing with those towns once they get their money? Oh good god! See, Shroud of the Avatar has player-built structures in the existing permanent world, meaning you can build stuff and other people can interact with it. You can also set up player-made shops. This always sounds good on paper, because you assume people will be sensible and keep the aesthetic fantasy, but the reality is you get stuff like this. Soul Town is lit up like a cheap Christmas market. It's garish and over the top. There are cosmetic items like flaming swords displayed and giant structures to nowhere built everywhere. I need to find an NPC to repair my broken equipment and I keep finding shops that look like they're from a Final Fantasy slum market. Lovely decorative wall of glowing skulls here, very in fashion this season. Yes, a paving stone filled in with an eagle painted with the Union flag. And the height of fantasy realism, a Napoleonic-era military uniform with lightsaber and flaming skull. This is what happens when you give players building options. Let's put such money-grabbing endeavors aside, because we're talking about purely narrative-driven flexibility based on role-playing. Without that flexibility, or perhaps a more fitting word, transmutability, the story is confined. This is particularly noticeable when we're talking about an epic fantasy tale with a dark force that threatens to physically change the entire landscape and cause great suffering. If everything goes back to normal, like nothing happened, then there are no real consequences to such events. This is also when permadeath becomes invaluable to this whole idea of transmutability. Should that event happen, and you can just respawn, then what is the value of losing? Well, there is none, and the interest in the story would be lost. Would you watch your favorite shows and movies if you knew all the characters were immortals? And that's not taking anything away from non-primitive roleplay game styles or the extraordinary wonderful stories they manage to weave there. But put yourself in the shoes of the reader, not the player, and tell me which one would you prefer to read. Unlike MMOs, Neverwinter Nights is not driven by money. The people behind those servers? Hobbyists. With a Y. There you go. 
So players affecting change is much more pronounced there because the players are not just seen as money bags. They are the assets, the actual talent of the server. While anyone can do it, certain players can truly excel in it. But for the sake of not digressing, I'll talk about the more advanced ideas of roleplay in another video. With Neverwinter Nights being this type of breeding ground that created hardcore roleplay experiences, it was just a matter of time. Out of that sizzling hotbed that created roleplay game worlds, Hayes was born, mutated to the extreme. I spoke about Hayes in a previous video, you can go back and watch it. It would have been perfect for such a story. It had true permadeath. It also allowed players to be in positions of power and change the landscape, so high transmutability. And it was social and narrative driven, meaning that the dungeon masters and the creators cared about driving a good story into existence. This set the infrastructure for interesting stories to take place. In Hayes, rulers and tyrants came to power and often would die just as fast. Tensions were high, there were murder conspiracies, entire armies were slaughtered, citadels fell. Knowing that a player can experience a deep pain of death for a character that they invested in for so long that they may not even play in that server again because it hurt so much to have your character die, then it makes everything that transpired in Haze so much more interesting. But the topic of permadeath deserves its own video, which it will get, so I will not delve deeper than I already have. All in all, if we can capture those emotions, we have a good freaking story. So, we have the tools to create such infrastructure that lay the ground for a novelized story based on actual events. We've actually had them since the invention of purely text-driven engines, and even prior to that with simple tabletop RPG sessions. In fact, novels based on such sessions do exist, including Dragonlands, Malazan Book of the Fallen, and other iconic novels. But we're not talking about based on, we're talking about the actual events being recorded, and that kind of genre has a name. It's called RPG replays, or actual plays. It mostly refers to text recording of tabletop RPG sessions. It's kind of a thing in Japan. In fact, in Japan, text versions of RPG replays are commercially published. The most popular example is Sword World RPG, the creators of which are noted for pioneering the genre. But replays are not novels, they are pure transcripts of tabletop RPG sessions. That's all they are. In the English-speaking community, the idea of the RPG replay literary genre is unheard of. Cleaning the raw data of replays and novelizing it is also something that was done. Record of Lotus War is an example of such a novel, based purely on the direct novelization of RPG replays. Sadly, it's defined as a fantasy novel, which doesn't really reflect the nature of the story, does it? In role-playing persistent worlds, we have something very similar to RPG replays. It's called in-character forms. In-character forms exist in practically every self-respecting role-play server. Record-keeping of events that transpired is just one of the usages, and usually those records of events aren't posted as pure chat recordings. They can be, but typically they're novelized by the players that post them. It's a great tool, often not used frequently enough, and it's a great way to document events. And I'm about to show you just how valuable it is. This is the archive of Hayes, and it contains all the in-character forum postings 16 years after the server disintegrated. Someone kept those records all this time, and I only recently discovered that this file exists. To me, it's like finding a treasure trove. In this archive is everything that the characters recorded, like documented pieces of history. You can find notes, poems, lore masters writing of events, special moments that players documented for their characters, and hey, someone even mentioned my character. Sharondale spoke with me today, and I felt like my heart was going to jump from my chest. Her touch alone would make me rise from the dead. She is self-spoken and caring, but there is still buried just below the surface. Being around her makes my heart sing in ways I never thought possible. She has been a good friend to me to this day. Without her aid, 
I would have left the settlement to seek my own destiny elsewhere. Hopefully we can become friends, or who knows what the future may hold, but I hope we are together to witness it. My gosh, I honestly never knew about that until I searched my character's name. That kinda got me emotional. It's funny that the first thing I did was to look for my character's name. That speaks of a broader phenomenon. Stories that you experience are naturally more special to you, but if you weren't there, you wouldn't care so much. Yes, I have a personal connection to those stories, but the thing is that anyone could have been a part of that story. Anyone could have added their character to the narrative by creating a character. Unlike a single fantasy author, where all the characters and events transpire inside their heads, in the virtual world we all have the ability to be a part of the story, to put our mark in history, whether in a small or a big way, whether we choose to do it or not, it's up to us. But that's what makes those stories ours, not his or hers. It's not just one person or a few people. It's a story accessible for all of us to write together. Each player can only write for their own character. And unlike the case of a single fantasy writer, they don't quite get to choose the consequences of their character's actions. It's so uncanny seeing that archive of a game server that I played 16 years ago knowing that the players who play there, long gone, their characters, long forgotten. But within this archive there is a story of a world that once existed, their world, the players and the characters who were there, of the life they had, of the stories they had to tell, of all the bygones, all the myths, the legends, their poetries and everything that happened there, spelled out in fragments. The Hayes records with all those in-character postings are there for everyone to read. Should someone go over all those writings, they could assemble them into a story. I actually kinda did. At least I started to, but then I noticed the problem. It sounds purely like a fantasy novel, but it shouldn't. It's different. It's players playing in a way that's so immersive that it feels like a fantasy novel. How can I include the player's side of the story? There has to be a way to write it differently. I guess one idea is to novelize it as a pure fantasy, while keeping all the relevant logs and references on the other side, even with screenshots, kinda like evidence and footnotes. Or perhaps another way to go about it is to write it in the style of lead RPG. Lead RPG is a new kind of fantasy genre about stories that take place within an RPG world, typically online, where the game elements are actually referenced. So you wouldn't just know about the characters, you would also know about the players behind each of those characters, their thoughts and feelings. Maybe you could also know about the characters' level, or even about the dungeon masters and their behind-the-scenes stuff. I guess the name for this genre would be non-fiction lead RPG. And with the advent of technology, we could even take it a step further into movies, because everything I said so far is true for movies as well. So instead of writing and documenting, everybody can screen record their session and it will be edited to a movie once the story plays out. But with Neverwinter Nights, without proper narration, such a movie would look awkward. More modern games have voice role-playing. Alright, pleasure to meet you, Sheriff Nelson. All right, Sheriff Nelson, I have a few choice words with you, and I just want to have an understanding of why did you let these hooligans, these evil people, lay besiege on a beautiful town like St. Denis? Welcome, Princess. King Darkus, are you ready? Of course. The two must be unified in blood before they can continue on their journey. But voice role playing versus text role playing is an issue in of itself, and though voice role playing may seem like the bomb, it also comes with a huge heap of challenges and limitations. Don't get me started. Players recording, documenting their characters' journeys, and even making movies in voice role-playing servers based on their characters' perspectives is a thing. That's kinda what the genre of replay has transformed itself into in modern culture. But both of those issues are a big topic in of itself and I will do a separate video for each of them. 
We have yet a lot to explore. We've only begun to scratch the surface of the kind of powerful collaborative storytelling that we can do with video games. Thanks for watching, and till next time.